um, I'm just going to move on to our final um, contributor, who's Nicole, um, who works for Ordnance Survey. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, communicating data quality, because um, I know my personal um, experience is that quite often people don't necessarily need data to be perfect. And if there's flaws, they're OK with that, so long as they know that, if you know what I mean. So sometimes known quality data, um, even if it's got some problems with it, might be as useful um, as, as perfect data, if such a thing exists. Um, and so it for our data users, whether that's using for an analytical purposes or using for research in general or for statistical purposes, all of these uses of data all rely on understanding quality and, and knowing whether or not data can really be trusted. So, Nicole, do you want to tell us a little bit about your work? I'm sorry, I will get rid of this cat um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and what you've been working on in this space. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Um, yeah, so uh, as Rebecca said, I'm from the Ordnance Survey. I work as a data management specialist in our data team, but actually um, I'm probably going to speak more over the next few minutes about some work I've done um, with the Geospatial Commission and the Geo6 organisations. So for those who maybe aren't aware, that's um, the Ordnance Survey, the UK Hydrographic Office, uh, British Geological Survey, Land Registry, the Coal Authority and the Valuation Office. Um, and of course, draw on my own experiences, I'm sure, within Ordnance Survey as well. Um, but in particular, some of the work that um, I was involved in very heavily last year and continuing continuing into this year was the data discoverability project. So it's a a project sort of looking across all of our organisations about how we can make our data more discoverable. And that, as you can imagine, has got a whole ream of different types of work going on, you know, some around kind of search engine optimization, some around um, a lot, a lot of focus on the metadata um, of a data set in particular. And that's kind of where quality comes in. And, um, and last year I was very heavily involved in looking at authoritative data and trustworthy data and um, as part of that work we held a lot of workshops and we had interviews with various different people um, to kind of understand what are the different aspects of an authoritative or trustworthy or you know insert similar words here that mean that people can can ultimately first of all find that data but then actually use it with confidence with trust and understand um, what it's meant to be for. And so in sort of our workshops, of course, some of the types of things that came up were around statutory mandates or legal obligations or um, or public tasks, for example. But actually, a really key theme that came through time and again was around data quality and actually how the two the two things kind of went hand in hand and that, you know, it was all very well and good having perhaps, you know, a mandate to be a specific provider of a specific type of geos but it was about geospatial data but it, the, the concept applies definitely more broadly but actually then in having that role particularly within kind of a government organization the quality of that data is so fundamentally important because one of the things that sort of really stuck with me in that um during that work was in speaking to people in interviews almost a kind of implicit assumption that data quality was being managed and maintained um, and, and continually improved to meet the use case and make sure it was fit for purpose. Because I think, particularly within government, we are seen as, as having very valuable data assets and managing them um, on behalf of, of the whole of the country. And so I think that's really important and it was it was really interesting seeing how the kind of two aspects of that um, came through, and we ultimately kind of pulled that together into um, a kind of process or framework, and then um, and and that really drew on what was then an earlier version of the data quality framework that's now been published, um, and sort of split that into almost a kind of section looking at um, trust in the organisation. So, what were they there to do? Did they have the right governance, the policies, the processes? Um, to manage that data and then actually almost their confidence in the data set which was around very well very heavily focused on the, the quality and the different dimensions of data quality and so i i guess as you say people have this kind of implicit assumption that 
government is working really, really hard on the quality of data. And I think we all really wish we had the time it would take and the resources it would take to actually make sure all the data was amazing all the time. But also, I think all of us who've worked in government data know that the reality is it will quite often be fit for one purpose, but much less so for another purpose. Um, and that there are always limitations. And that if we were ensuring that the data was perfect, there would simply be no time for us to do any of the other many other important jobs that we've all got to be doing. So what did you find about how um, the importance of kind of communicating that, that information to people and and what they really needed to know um, about the strengths and weaknesses of that data. Yeah, so it's a really good point. And I think um, you're totally right that I it would be really hard, I think, to find an absolutely perfect data set that ticked the box, you know, 100 percent in every single one of those different dimensions, because I think there's often a almost a trade-off between the different dimensions, um, depending on that use case. So I definitely think that one of the, the really key themes that came out was around understanding what that purpose was and really being clear in that. So, you know, what what are you designing that data for? Um, what is the use case you're trying to address or the outcome you're trying to enable? And, and knowing what is good enough for that. I think that we we do live in a world now where data is everywhere, data is ubiquitous, there's more and more data, you know, every moment. And I think, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. We do live in a world with lots of data. Um, but at, and, and I think my point is going to be that I think people are using data in ways that maybe wasn't necessarily envisaged at the beginning of when that data was, of the data life cycle, when that data was created. And that's not a bad thing. That's a you know that's how we get innovation. That's how we get new new outcomes. You know all of the great stuff that is going on. But I think it's really important, particularly in kind of a data set's metadata, and to have all of that wrapper around that maybe does really clearly lay out. You know what what is this data about? What this data about? What was it designed for? That doesn't preclude it from other use cases you know by any means but at least it helps to go in with that or to start looking and understanding perhaps then what might be some limitations and actually you know in that kind of constantly evolving world you know we're doing this at ordnance survey we're constantly trying to evolve our data to meet those other new use cases and that and that means our data constantly evolves but i think communicating that initial sort of reason for being and making sure that people are aware of that really then helps to to hopefully use it effectively and kind of have an understanding of some of that not things that not necessarily the limitations but just to kind of not just always use it with rose tinted glasses for any purpose and then potentially not quite get to the outcome you were expecting I, I identify with that so much I think that it's something that it's the massive strength of government data that one bit of one data set will go in you know 15 different directions but it's also that challenge that just because it can um, or just because that might be the only source that we have it doesn't mean that the the design of that data will magically suit those 15 different directions it doesn't mean that we have a choice because it still may be the only data set that we have that tells us about a certain subject but doing making sure we're using that data with our eyes open and fully informed is is really really key um so that's been really interesting to talk to all of you actually to hear about the way that building a culture can really help to support data quality work the importance of assessing and using really solid methodology and consistent dimensions for for assessing data quality for making the right improvements targeting at the things that make a sustainable change in data quality and then making sure that that's being communicated widely and with the right context um so thank you all for that. And I believe now I'm going to hand back to Charles and we'll start the kind of round table questions portion of the session.